This is Trisha from Tribe to Village. This is our tribe, our village, our family. Thank you so much for joining us today. And today we're talking about something that many, when many women have experienced or will experience in their lifetime, and that's fibroids. Overview, fibroids are typically non-cancerous growths within uh, the uterus, and they can lead to, sometimes you might not have any symptoms of, at all, but sometimes it could also lead to great discomfort and affect fertility and has the potential. Oh, not much is known about it, but there are correlations, one could say, with um, obesity, family history, diet, early onset of puberty. And this is something that affects disproportionately women of color more, Black women more than other races. However, it's important to know that you don't get fibroids because you're back black because women of all races have experienced fibroids. So with that being said, Jay, sir, uh, do you mind sharing with us like what prompted you to go seek help um, for your fibroids? Okay, so first I just wanna put a disclaimer out there that I am not a doctor or a physician or a GYN. Um, I am just speaking from personal experience. So if you are experiencing something similar, I suggest you go out and seek some help from a professional. Um, I initially went out to seek help um, because I, I started having symptoms and it also runs in my family. My sister actually was diagnosed, diagnosed with fibroids and she mm -hmm. had the surgery to remove them. Mm -hmm. So after her surgery, I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I have them too. Mm, so you said that your sister was diagnosed with it and you started to have symptoms. What kind of symptoms did you have? So I always thought this was natural or normal, but apparently it wasn't. I always had very heavy periods mm -hmm. and my periods would last anywhere between seven to 10 days sometimes. And I would also have spotting in between periods. And, you know, I, I thought it was normal because the women in my family had the same issues. So we, mm. I just thought it was normal. So um, when my sister was diagnosed, I was like, okay, it's not normal. I think maybe there's something more going on. I would also have um, nausea dur during my periods, like I had morning sickness. And I knew I wasn't, you know, expecting at the time so I was like this is strange mm -hmm. um I would also get back pains severe cramping like to the point where I would actually fall out of work um and I just couldn't function couldn't function on a daily basis during my period wow you yeah. know that sounds pretty much like me <laughs> oh no and uh, and a lot of women so Wow, so that's good. That's good to know because, like we said earlier, sometimes you might not have any symptoms, and sometimes you might have symptoms of great discomfort. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you were aware that your sister had it, so that that prompted you to go get, you know, get it checked out. Yeah, and apparently anemia is also a symptom, which also mm -hmm. runs in my family. So mm -hmm. again, I thought it was normal that you got anemia because you're losing a lot of blood during your period. Mm, so much blood. Okay. So when you went to the doctor and you were like, did you go in there with the intention of being checked for fibroids or did you go in there for like, just to, just to double check that everything was okay? Well, I went there for my annual, um, okay. for my regular checkup. And then I was like, you know what? Um, can you please check my stomach? Because I don't know why it's always bulging. I feel mm. constantly constipated and there's pain on this side and that side. So the doctor, yeah, he palpitated and he, he was able to tell just by touching that I had fibroids. Wow, wow. So you raised another important part, point. Please, please, for anyone who's, go, who's watching, uh, myself included, do not miss your annuals. Go to your doctor's appointment because in Jason's case, it was, you know, it saved her from a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort. And I would also suggest get a good doctor, get a good GYN who's going to listen to you because mm -hmm. not all GYNs 
will um, listen to your complaints. They True will story. Dismissive. And it took me a, a few years for me to get a good doctor who wasn't so dismissive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So he felt, so he just, um, he, he was able to feel the fibroids. So that means they were large? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the largest one I had was about the size of a peach. Oh, wow. Wow. Like a, <laughs> like yeah. a Georgia peach, like a big, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that must have been a, um, very painful. Yeah. Okay. So once the doctor was able to, able to tell you just by feeling around, did he do anything else to verify that it was a fibroid or not? Yeah. We followed up with an ultrasound and then okay. also a sonogram um, to see how big they are and exactly where they were in my uterus. Wow. So do you mind sharing like how, how many did you have and where in your uterus there were? Sure. I had two, um, not inside, but um, outside of the uterus and they're called, sub, hold on, they're called subserosal. Mm. And they usually grow outside in your uterus. Um, and I also had, I'm sorry, no, I had three subserosal and one mm. submucosal. The submucosal um, is the one that can be potentially dangerous because it can make you infertile. It bulges into the cavity of your uterus. So mm. the doctor was like, yeah, you, we need to get this removed because you're still young and you want to have kids later. Mm. So we want to avoid any miscarriages or any infertility. So we mm. immediately booked a surgery. And oh, it's funny because the person who did the surgery was his son. Oh, really? It was a family affair. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, Jason, I'm so happy that you were able to get help quickly, you know, so that um, before it did any damage to your fertility. Yeah. Or to just you in general, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you had three, three fibroids. Okay. So, how. The real soul, three outside of the uterus and uh -huh. inside of the cavity of the uterus. So you had four all together. Four all together. And were they growing over time or are these like new, new fibroids? No, apparently they were growing over time because um, I actually first heard about me potentially having fibroids in my 20s. Um, but at that time, they were like, oh, if they're too small. We're just going to keep an eye on it. It's not causing you any, it's not causing you any discomfort. It's not causing you any um, symptoms. So we're just going to leave it. Mm. So me being young and naive, I was like, okay, that's fine. And I never even thought about it ever again until my sister went mm -hmm. through, through the surgery. Wow. So there was never any like follow up from your chart or anything? No. So we really have to be on top of our medical care because if they, they're not going to check for us. So, okay. Wow. So anyone who's watching, make sure that you, like we said before, go to all your doctor's appointment. And if something seems like it's falling through the cracks, do not be afraid to speak up because you're your best representative, your best advocate. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So Jay, sir, did was surgery the only option for you or did the doctor give you any other choices before surgery? Um, they, they spoke about other choices, but I felt like the best choice for me at my age would be the myomectomy, which is uh, they kind of do like a C-section incision. And then they also do a laparoscopy, which is like a little robot that goes in and like sucks out, you know, the the fibroids that you have. Wow, wow. So you did, so that was all under one surgery, right? Yes. Okay, so, and I'm, and I'm sure like the size and the location of your fibroids would affect the different choices that people have, right? Yes. Okay, and I know that there were also um, um, less invasive treatment for fibroids. Uh, that's best to discuss with your doc doctor. Make sure you um, discuss the vast <laughs> spectrum of treatments out there. If someone is pushing you to do surgery, 
please do your research. If you find that's appropriate for you, like it was for JSER, please pursue that. But just know that there are other options out there. And I'll include a link below um, so that you could just have a little bit more information about fibroids. But please talk to your doctor and ask about different, different types of treatments so that you will be educated enough to choose what's best for you. Yes. So and apparently the one that I chose is also um, the fastest recovery. Mm. There's that. I didn't want to miss a lot of days from work. So I decided <laughs> to go with that one. <laughs> uh -huh. So how long, how long is the recovery from that one? Um, about four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. Wow. For such a major surgery. Okay. Yeah. And so Jay, I know you got this procedure done during your childbearing years and you're still in your childbearing years. So <laughs> were they able to like um, um, save your fertility? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The doctor was like, yeah, you, you can have kids, uh, many as you want. Mm -hmm. um, but he did warn that they do have the potential of coming back. So um, I have to go every year to make sure that everything is functioning right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are there any changes in your life that you've made in order to help prevent them from reoccurring or to slow a reoccurrence? So yes, I, I'm trying to change my diet. Mm -hmm. um, there's still mixed research out there as to what's the best diet for mm -hmm. fibroids or for hormonal imbalance. Let me guess, is it vegan? That seems to be the answer for everything. <laughs> yeah, they actually recommend following a Mediterranean diet. Oh, uh, okay. No shade to no shade to my my vegan friends and family. No shade whatsoever. No, but there's also research out there saying that a keto or a paleo diet may also work um, mm. with balancing your hormones. So it's really hard to follow a specific diet when you don't really um, there's no like real research out there that supports. Mm -hmm. I know diet, but I've been trying to decrease my sugar intake, um, okay. any processed foods, so any potato chips, um, any, you know, high sodium foods like pizza, frozen pizza, or, um, mm. you know, things that we love, French fries, McDonald's, mm -hmm. <laughs> Burger King, all of that. So I gave that up a while back, but mm -hmm. um, now I try to eat more organic grass-fed meat. Mm -hmm. um, I usually only have it like once or twice a month just to try to like keep my anemia away. Meat? Red meat, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the chicken, I, I like have a love-hate relationship with chicken. So <laughs> I'll have it like maybe once or twice a month also. Mm -hmm. But I usually eat more um, my seafood, uh, mm. albacore, mackerel, uh, salmon, uh, mm -hmm. tuna. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I usually go to for uh, protein and, you know, feeling more satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, I do love vegetables, but I also have other conditions that um, if I eat too much raw vegetables, I get mm -hmm. really constipated. So I try mm -hmm. to eat you know, vegetables and I try to really cook them. Yeah. Um, if I want anything sweet, I try to bake it myself. And I'll use a, a paleo or keto friendly recipe for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to like satisfy my cravings by not being so um, restrictive with my diet. Mm -hmm. And I also try to be mindful about my underlying issues. Mm -hmm. so, wow. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes a lot of sense because if fibroids are affected by hormones, there are home hormones in so many things that we consume, especially animal products, like from our whole milk to the beef or the chicken. There's so much hormones and it adds up without realize without you realizing it. That's one thing I don't have anymore is dairy. I completely cut out dairy. Um, mm -hmm. because I eventually developed lactose intolerance, so I don't mm -hmm. do dairy anymore. Um, many of us. <laughs> Unless it's like Greek yogurt, which doesn't bother me at all. Uh -huh. I say that's actually really good for your um, 
um, digestive system and your hormones. So mm -hmm. I try to get grass okay. fed. Dairy. Great. <laughs> yeah. So besides your, your diet, what you consume, um, are there any other changes since having your surgery in order to prevent them from coming back? I would say I'm more physically active now than I was during my 20s and um, my early 30s. Mm. So I try to be out there and, and do something physically active at least for like 15, mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's walking, biking, cleaning around the house or going up and down the stairs down here in my, in my building during this yeah. pandemic, you know, it's really hard to get out there and, and do a lot of things, but mm -hmm. we try to find creative ways to be active. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was one more thing that I changed. Um, stress can definitely uh, alter your hormones. Oh, stress. Uh, stress uh, hormone called cortisol. Mm -hmm. So if that cortisol goes up, it will definitely affect your other hormones. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting. There's a lot of research out there that suggests that stress um, can definitely lead to a lot of illnesses. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest finding ways to de-stress, whether that's um, taking a walk, meditating, yoga, or taking a nice long bath at the end of the week, whatever helps you de-stress. Yeah. Um, and avoid alcohol, like any type Wait, of say what now? <laughs> I I have it like maybe once in a blue moon. Uh-huh. But um any sugary alcohols like wine or any other processed alcohol, try to avoid. I, I think they recommend for you to stick to the hard liquors <laughs> because it has less sugar. <laughs> okay, so stick so, so your advice is to stick to the hard liquors and not the mixed drink. Like whiskey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, aren't going to have any alcohol. Don't hold her to that. Like we said, we are not medical professionals. So discuss it with your doctor. <laughs> and there's one thing. I'm only human. I love my coffee. So that's another thing that they say you should cut back on. But um, I, I'm trying. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. so yeah. only have, like, I've gone from four cups a day to only like two cups. Oh, wow. That's, that's an accomplishment. Yeah. And, and I think it's important to know that any step that you take, as long as there's a step that's being, that's being taken, that it will help, right? Yeah. And, and I think they said like smoking, give up smoking right away too. So I guess like in an effort to prevent fibroids from coming back, it's just to be mindful to try to lead as much of a, a, a holistic, healthy lifestyle as possible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Jason, for sharing your story. Do you regret it at all? Oh, no. No, absolutely not. I mean, I'll have the, the scars. It'll look like I had a C-section, but whatever. I'm healthy. I'm stronger. I feel so much better now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel the constant need to urinate. Like there is that also um, because the, the the fibroids would press on your uterus and then mm. from that they would press on your bladder so it was like having a baby basically I uh -huh. had little babies in my uterus <laughs> yeah yeah you had little they say food baby you had fibroid babies I had fibroid babies so wow I got them all out yeah and I don't have those symptoms as severe anymore like mm -hmm. the period they say that your period will um it's it's not it's like heavy for at least two to three days and mm -hmm. then it winds up. But it does last a little longer after your surgery, but that will go back to normal eventually. That's um, what it'll go back to normal? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, <laughs> yes, I am just so thankful that your surgery, that you found a doctor that was able to listen to you, that was able to address your needs and was able to successfully remove your fibroids and to save your life, save your health, save your fertility, save the things that were important to you. So thank you again, Jacer, for sharing us today. And remember to always go through, go to your annual checkup if you have anything that seems a little off, like heavy bleeding, uh, frequent urination, 
um, frequent cramping, any symptom that seems like, um, those are just a few, but if, you, if you're if you having symptoms that feel a little off, please bring it to the attention to your doctor, to your, um, your gyno, and make sure that your voice is heard. If you feel like they're not listening to you, don't be afraid to move on to the next one and keep going until you find a doctor that truly listens to your concern and is able to look at and willing to look at X, Y, and Z because your health matters and you're your biggest advocate. So, and Jay, do you have any tips for um, like post-surgery? Oh yeah, and, and there's plenty of, of them online, but from, uh, what I went through from the surgery that I had, which was the myomectomy uh, laparoscopic one, um, I would recommend getting like a, um, what are those uh, uh, post-pregnancy uh, yoga pants? <laughs> oh, oh, the <laughs> post-pregnancy underwear? Post-pregnancy underwear. We'll, we'll put a link in the description below. Yes, any flowy dresses that won't constrict your, your um, wounds or incisions. Uh, they do sell some underwear that will provide some sort of compression um, to your belly because the first two weeks, I would say, you, your abs are going to be weak. Um, it's going to hurt to sit up. It's going to hurt to walk upright. Um, yeah, I, I walked like this for like... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Um, and you're going to have a lot of discomfort, a lot of gas uh, for the first couple of days after surgery because of all the air that they pump into your, your um, system. Um, but they give you pain meds, so you can mm -hmm. take the pain meds as needed. I didn't really use them as much. Um, what I did notice was that my appetite uh, completely changed. It decreased because of all the gas that I had in my belly. Mm -hmm. I could only eat like a little bit at a time. And I actually lost a considerate amount of weight after that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I would recommend taking it slow. Um, don't go crazy with the exercise. They do recommend walking immediately to try to get all those gases out of your system. So go for a walk, I would say, mm -hmm. after, um, after eating or if you're just not feeling well, you feel a little bit of discomfort on your belly, go for a walk. It, it will definitely help. Um, yeah, any post-op underwear will do. Um, also, you may want to massage the area, the incision, the cuts after um, the doctor says it's okay for you to like mm -hmm. open the bandages and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you, Jason, for those tips. Thank you so much. And a good thing is that yeah, your doctor and your surgeon will definitely provide follow-up care instructions. So make sure to follow them to the T. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everyone is different. Everyone's going to have different um, side effects after the surgery. But the yes. Yes. Are, um, deep vein thrombosis, which is like a clot in your veins. So you have to keep moving. Um, they also give you a spiral meter to blow into so that your lung capacity goes back to normal. Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you once again, Jacer, for sharing your experience. And thank you for everyone who's watching. And hopefully you were able to get something from Jacer's experience and just know at the very least that you are not alone. You're not the only one experiencing this and there are options. There are options. And um, I wish you all the best of luck. <laughs> and let's continue to elevate and grow together. And if you're joining us for the first time, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And if you're a returning member of our tribe, don't be afraid to hit the notification button so that you will always know when Tribe to Village uploads a video. Thank you so much for joining us. Once again, let's continue to elevate and grow together. Bye.